Hi everybody, Lenny Killer here on Killer Film Reviews. Um, I just thought I would record a little short introductory video in a prelude to this Titanic review. I find that this movie is a classic in cinema and hopefully one of these days uh, whoever decides to remake it again does a decent job like James Cameron did, a future director who may be in, may be in film school right now, who knows. But I just wanted to mark this special occasion of the Titanic's sinking. It's the 110th anniversary of the Titanic's sinking. And I figured it would be a good time to say a toast to those that passed away the Titanic. You can see here I got my my Moet and Shandon Imperial Brute. I showed you that in the earlier toast video, a little toast on the main channel, Lenny Killer Show. Pour myself a little glass here. First time really showing stuff on camera here. Get my hand shaking a little bit. A little nervous. I feel like I would kind of just regret it if I didn't take this time to at least mark the occasion. So here's a toast to those that have passed away in Titanic. May they rest in peace. May you all enjoy this killer film review on this anniversary of this tragedy. On the 110th anniversary of this tragedy. I'll let pass me take over from here after I sip this nice little Imperial Root Moet and Chandon Champagne that is French. No, back to past me. Hello everybody, welcome back to Killer Film Reviews. This film review this film review will be done a little differently than how I've done them in the past. I'll be watching Titanic in three parts and giving my thoughts on each one as I review this film. So let's start this out by going over our actors and actresses pretty much. We have Leonardo DiCaprio as Jack Dawson, Kate Winslet as Rose du DeWitt. Bukater, Billy Zane as Cal Hockley, Kathy Bates as Molly Brown, Francis Fisher as Ruth David Bukater, Gloria Stewart as Old Rose, she sadly passed away in 2010, Bill Praxton as, Bo as Brock Lovett, Bernard Smith as Captain Smith, David Warner as Spicer Lovejoy, Victor Garber as Thomas Andrews, Jonathan Hyde as Bruce Ismay, Susie Emmis as Lizzie Calvert, and let's see, oh yep, Ewan Stewart as First Officer Marak, Jason Berry as Tommy Ryan, Danny Nusi as Fabricio, a bunch of unlisted people here I'm not going to get into. So basically by me watching this first part of the film, my impressions are that the film is having a good good steady flow through it as so far. We I've seen I've have seen Rose basically describe her being like a prison pretty much with the first class lifestyle and and Jack basically trying to get her out of that. I've, I've seen the first stages of that so far as I'm watching at this point. I see the start of the whole animosity between Cal Hockley and Jack Dawson. I see a little bit of that. I, I saw a little bit of that first class dinner scene. Not gotten to the later stage of the film yet. Basically, in this first stage of the film, we see Old Rose basically see herself in the in the drawing of herself, pretty much. That Jack did, and she starts seeing flashbacks and all that, and she basically is like she calls the she calls Mr. Lovett up, says, "Hey, I I got something for you," and then 
they visit the, the eclipse, I believe it's called, and they chit chat for a bit about um, the, the story of the Titanic. They get shown a little animation of the Titanic sinking. And Old Rose begins to tell her story. We see the Titanic basically getting ready for lunch, Jack winning his tickets, and him basically taking off to the Titanic. And we have this um, we have this little monologue by Rose, of course, as well, where she's talking about how she's trapped in the first class lifestyle, how she feels trapped, she's being basically forced to marry the Cal, Cal Hockley for the money, of course, because the mother wants her to marry Cal for the money. This is, of course, later down the film where they kind of get into that a little bit more. At this point, I've not gotten to that film. I've seen this film before, but I'm just watching this in parts because I want to give uh, a good representation of the film, considering that it's the 110th anniversary of the Titanic sinking coming up here by the time I release this. Which is why this one runs a little bit longer than a usual film review or killer film review on this channel because I'm trying to capture the essence of this film as best as I can. So we do start to see this, this animosity develop between the first class and third class in this first hour of the film I've, I've rewatched so far. Ruth Bukatir basically is not happy with Jack because Jack keeps teaching Rose how to do things unclass-like, I guess, or or lower class-like. I guess that's the best way to put it. 1912 was a different time entirely compared to now, even to 2012, and now we're in 2022. Times have changed. There is no forced, forced marriage in first world countries, but it does still happen in other countries. Unfortunately, and it, it is wrong. It is wrong. Human trafficking, all that stuff is just wrong. But yeah. But we do get to see Jack save Rose from trying to commit a, an attempt on herself, on her life. So we see that play out. Basically, Jack also meets with Rose before the first class dinner. And is basically just showing her his drawings that are 18 plus in nature, pretty much at that point. You know, so women without clothes and all that. Rose takes an appreciation for finger finger painted art, pretty much as it's alluded to earlier when they're decorating her room. Basically, getting a bunch of Picasso paintings up. A lot of the set pieces and all that are pretty accurate and spot on to the time. I, what really gets me is, of course, seeing the clock on the staircase. That's one of my favorite scenes is whenever they're by the clock on the staircase. I basically left off at, at this point at about, about the time when they're leaving the first class dinner. And Rose is basically going to meet up with Jack because Jack hands her a little note. Him being all smooth and all that. I will resume my thoughts on this very shortly. You'll hear the me from the future pretty much describing how the second half of the film went, the third half of the film went, and so on. I'm going to try, of course, to go in depth and not to make this short as I want this to be a good, accurate review that is spot on and it's true to the film as 110th anniversaries don't come along that often and you want to get it right you know what i mean i just want to get it right i'll let future me take over from here and this is the end of my first hour recording of me watching it see you shortly future me continuing on from where i left off in the first part of my review i ended up just watching the rest of the film all in one go pretty much this review was no easy task at all the the premiere pro decided to have an update in the middle of actually completing this specific video so i had to mess around with some settings a bit so the audio is a, a little rough in some parts i've tried to do my best to kind of even out the audio as best as i can to my abilities in premiere pro 
The rest of the movie is is great. I got to say the whole chasing scene was great when Jack's running away from that uh, from Cal's little henchman. That part was great. What also was great was the focus on Rose. Rose's story is Titanic's story. Rose's and Jack's story, but mostly Rose's struggle against the upper class traditions and against abusive men because there's plenty of, of abusive men in this little film that you can see. Cal's very abusive. He slaps Rose. He yells in Rose's face. He gets close to her. It's it's really unreal The those kind of that those things happen to women even in these days and times. I am always against violence and I feel that any romantic relationship that the partner should talk it out and it shouldn't go and resort to violence. I've learned that it, it, it's all based a lot on your tone of voice. That's that's a huge factor as well and as well as being honest with your significant other. Whether they be at the boyfriend girlfriend stage or you're a married couple now or engaged, wherever you are in the path of life. We just learn the story of Rose throughout this film and her struggles with the traditions. We learn the we learn Jack's struggles as well as he struggles against the whole first class, third class dynamic. Not much is mentioned, of course, of second class, but their accommodations are pretty similar to first class. They just got their meals on different days, pretty much, little smaller rooms and all that. But the the thing that really strikes me as odd was the fact that uh, that this Ismay fellow basically snuck off the ship pretty much without going down with the ship. I guess he wanted to live on for another day, but it was technically only women and children, but there's multiple accounts saying that he helped get women and children to the lifeboats. So James Cameron's depiction of him may not be totally accurate there. And another depiction, which the Murdoch family basically is disputed for many years at this point, is that Officer Murdoch did not end his life with a pistol there. That he did not go out that way, that he went out a different way which is another fair criticism of the movie. And I could see that because I honestly don't see like an officer that's in Murdoch's position just doing that. I see him trying to keep order. Honestly, maybe one, maybe he got trampled by the crowd or something when the passengers are trying to get in the lifeboats for all we know. Anybody who was still alive at that time is now long past, like since a long time ago now, but on the 110th anniversary, you know, I just like to say that may all these folks that have passed away rest in peace. Those that survived and those that didn't. Because this was a tragic maritime disaster that could have been prevented by simply having more lifeboats on Titanic. Honestly, I do enjoy the story of Rose and Jack, and I have seen the whole Jack 2, the, the Titanic 2 trailers where Jack just comes back to life and so, uh, he's unfrozen from the ice and stuff. Well I, I, well, I would say that maybe that would perhaps be something they could do in the future. I don't think James Cameron is up for that alley. I think he prefers more realistic endings to his movies, and I don't think he would go pursue a project where Jack suddenly back alive again, then Rose is old and all this. I mean, the, the actress that played Ro that played old roles, for instance, has passed on by this point. I mentioned that more towards the beginning of the film review. Titanic will always be one of those films that I keep close to my heart because the year 1997, you know, is a significant year for that movie and that's when it first came out. Significant to me as well for many reasons. But I digress. Does the film still hold up to modern viewing? Pretty much it still does. I mean, besides that one scene, besides the drawing room scene where they show like a woman's breast or whatever, there's not really any bad stuff in the film. The definition of PG-13 was different back then compared to now. Everything's just kind of changing. As far as I know, there was complete consent by Kate Winslet to do that scene. It was actually director James Cameron that, that was actually doing the drawing. So there's that as well. But I'm looking forward to James Cameron's Avatar 2 film. I think it's going to be great. I hope it breaks even more box office records like the first Avatar and like Titanic did. It's just his approach to filmmaking overall that I admire pretty much. 
Ridley Scott's another favorite director of mine, but he he goes too far in some of his movies, I will say that. He does. The Lost, The Last Duel, I think it was. There's too many instances of a certain scene involving rape that were shown to viewers of the movie like four times, and I just thought that was unnecessary. I know that maybe you wanted to show historical context, but I don't think that was necessary. But getting back to the film, this film is going to be a 10 out of 10 for me just because the plot flows good. There's a good dynamic, a good chemistry between Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio as Rose and Jack Dawson. So pretty, so it just, it shows the struggles of first class, second class, third class all throughout the film as well. And I hope that I can look back on this review for many years to come, honestly, because this is going to be the first time I actually show my face live on one of the channels. I'm only saving my face for special occasions like this, so don't expect to see me, see me sit there and do introductions like I did to this video, because it takes a lot of, a lot of charisma to work that out for me anyway. But... A woman's heart is an ocean full of treasures, as Rose says in the film, and I truly believe that. And I feel that um, this film will continue to outlast its time, and hopefully it will be preserved in a time capsule somewhere for future generations to enjoy. I'm sure the internet will be around, so they'll be able to enjoy it from there anyway. But whatever the next recreation of Titanic is, I hope that they stay faithful to the original vision of James Cameron in some ways, and they don't try to change too much. With that being said, may those who passed, passed away on April 14th, 1912, rest in peace. And I thank you all for enjoying this special killer film review on the 110th anniversary of Titanic sinking. Cherish your time with your loved ones and be well. And don't forget to support my work by sharing this video and subscribing and liking have a good day everybody see you in the next killer film review